Now it's just after half past two. We come to today's comedy classic. Next Wednesday, the 31st of May, the distinguished actress Athene Seiler will be a hundred years old. As a tribute to her, and with our congratulations, we are repeating Arsenic and Old Lace by Joseph Kesselring, in which she starred on the stage and the radio with Dame Sybil Thorndike. Also featured are Prunella Scales, Dinsdale Landon and Desmond Walter Ellis. My sister Martha and I have been talking all the week about your sermon last Sunday. Oh. <laughs> Which is really wonderful, Dr. Harper. In only two short years, you've taken on the spirit of Brooklyn. That's very gratifying, Miss Booster. Living here next to the church all our lives, you know, we've seen so many ministers come and go. The spirit of Brooklyn, we all say, is friendliness. And your sermons are not so much sermons as friendly talks. Personally, I've always enjoyed my talks with Cardinal Gibbons. Or have I met him yet? Uh, No, Teddy, dear, not yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are the biscuits good? Splendid, Aunt Abby. Would you have another biscuit, Dr. Harper? Oh, no, no. I'm afraid I'll have no appetite for dinner now. I, I always eat too many of your biscuits just to taste your lovely jam. Oh, well, we'll send you over a jar. No, no, you keep it here so I can be sure of having your biscuits with it. Very well. <laughs> I understand Mortimer's taking Elaine with him to the theatre again tonight. We are so happy it's your daughter he takes with him, Dr. Harper. It's a new experience for me to wait up until three o'clock in the morning for her to be brought home. Oh, but I do hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well, uh... But we'd feel so guilty if you did, Sister Martha and I. I mean, since it was here that your daughter met our nephew... I believe Mortimer to be quite a worthy gentleman, but uh, I must admit that I've watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter with some trepidation, uh, for one reason, Miss Abby. You mean his stomach, Dr. Harper? Stomach? Yes, his dyspepsia. Uh, No, no, Miss Abby. I'll be frank with you. I'm speaking of your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theatre. The theatre? Oh, no, Dr. Harper. Mortimer writes for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abby, but a dramatic critic is constantly exposed to the theatre. And I don't doubt but some of them develop an interest in it. No, not Mortimer. He hates the theatre. Really? Oh, yes. He writes awful things about it. But you can't blame him, poor boy. He was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. And then they just make him take this terrible night position. My, my. But as he says, the theatre can't last much longer anyway. And in the meantime, it's a living. Well, now, whoever do you suppose that is? Oh, come in, Mr. Brophy. Hello, Miss Brewster. How are you, Mr. Clyde? Very well, Miss Brewster. What news have you two police officers brought me? Colonel, we have nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, gentlemen. At ease. You know Dr. Harper? Yes. Hello, Dr. Harper. Uh, We've come for the toys for the Christmas fund, Miss Brewster. Oh, yes. That splendid work you men do for the poor children. Oh, it gives us something to do when we have to sit around the station. You get tired playing cards, and you start cleaning a gun. And the first thing you know, you've shot yourself in the foot. Oh, dear. (laughs) Teddy. Just go upstairs, dear, and get that big box from your Aunt Martha's room, will you? Yes, Aunt Abby. Come (laughs) Dear Teddy, always pretending he's in the army. And how is your wife, Mr. Brophy? Oh, she's better now. A a little weak still. Well, I'm going to get you some beef broth to take to her. Oh, now, don't bother, Miss Abby. You've done so much for her already. We made it this morning. Sister Martha's taking some to poor Mr. Benitsky right now. I won't be a minute. Sit down and be comfortable, all of you. Well, now, she shouldn't go to all that trouble. Mm, Listen, you just try to stop her or her sister from doing something nice, and for nothing. Colonel, you promise not to do that. But I'll have to call a cabinet meeting to get the release of those supplies. He used to do that in the middle of the night. The neighbours raised Cain with us. 
They're a little bit afraid of him anyway. Oh, he's quite harmless. Oh, suppose he does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. There's a lot worse people you could think he was. It's a shame. A nice family like this hatching a cuckoo like him. Well, the old girl's father, Teddy's grandfather, he was a little crazy, wasn't he? Uh, yes, crazy like a fox. He made a million dollars. Really? Oh. Yes, patent medicine. He used the house here as a sort of a clinic. Tried them out on people. <laughs> He used to make mistakes occasionally, too. The department never bothered him much because he was pretty useful on autopsies, especially poison cases. Well, whatever he did, he left his daughters fixed for life. Not that they ever spend any of it on themselves. Yes, I'm well acquainted with their charities. Oh, you don't know a tenth of it. When I was with the Missing Persons Bureau, I was trying to trace an old man that we never did find. Do you know there's a renting agency that's got this house down on its list for furnished rooms? They don't rent rooms. But anybody who comes here looking for a room goes away with a good meal and a few dollars in their pocket. Well, now, isn't this nice? Good afternoon, Miss Brewster. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Brovey? Dr. Harper and Mr. Klein. How are you, Miss Brewster? We uh, dropped in to get the Christmas toys. Oh, yes, of course. I hope Mrs. Brovey's better. Oh, she's doing fine, ma'am. Your sister's getting some soup for me to take to her. Oh, yes, we made it this morning. I just took some to a poor man who broke ever so many bones. Oh, so you're back, Martha. And how was Mr. Vinitsky? Oh, well, dear, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. The doctor was there. He's going to amputate in the morning. Oh, can we be present? No. I asked him, but he says it's against the rules. Well, here is the broth, Mr. Brophy. And be sure it's good and hot. Oh, yes, ma'am. Ah, and here's Teddy with the toys. There they are. Thank you, dear Teddy. <laughs> All checked and correct. There you are, Mr. Clyde. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. Well, we'll run along now. Goodbye, Mr. Clyde. Goodbye, Mr. Brophy. Goodbye, ma'am. And thank you. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I must be getting home, too. Oh, well, before you go, Dr. Harper... Charge! Charge the blockhouse! Have you ever tried to persuade him that he wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. You are always so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Once, a long time ago, do you remember, Martha? We thought if he would be George Washington, it might be a change for him. But he stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he'd be Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy. Oh, uh, you'll see that he signs these papers. What are they? Well, Dr. Harper has made arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dale Sanatorium after we pass on. Hmm, but why should Teddy sign any papers now? Oh, it's better to have it all settled. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon understands they're to be filed away until the time comes to use them. Mr. Witherspoon? Who's he? He's the superintendent of Happy Dale. And Dr. Harper has arranged for him to drop in tomorrow or the next day to meet Teddy. Well, uh, I I'd better be running along or Elaine will be over here looking for me. Well, give our love to Elaine. Oh, and Dr. Harper, please don't think harshly of Mortimer because he's a dramatic critic. Somebody has to do these things. Well, good day. Mm. <sighs> Have you only just had tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes. And dinner's going to be late, too. Why? Teddy! Teddy! Yes, Aunt Abby? Good news for you, dear. You're going to Panama to dig another lock for the canal. Delighted. I shall prepare for the journey at once. Abby, while I was out. Yes, dear, I just couldn't wait for you. I didn't know when you'd be back and Dr. Harper was coming. But all by yourself. Oh, but I got along splendidly. <laughs> I'll just run downstairs and see it. Oh, no, there wasn't time for that, dear, for I was all alone. Well, where is it then, Martha? Just look in the window seat. Abby, dear, what a lovely body. And all by yourself, too. Oh. Who can that be? Oh, it 
Lady Lane. Come in, dear. Good afternoon, Miss Martha. Oh, I thought Father was here. Oh, well, he's just this minute left. Didn't you meet him? No, I took the shortcut through the cemetery. Hasn't Mortimer come yet? No, dear. Oh, he, he asked me to meet him here. Do you mind if I wait? No, not at all. He should be here any minute now. Oh, oh. my goodness, Elaine, what must you think of us not having tea cleared away by this time? I just put the tray in the kitchen. Don't bother with anything in the kitchen, Abby, until Mortimer comes, and then I'll help you. Oh, there he is now. Hello, Aunt Martha. Abby, Mortimer's here. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Mort. Hello, Mortimer. Hello, Aunt Abby. How are you, dear? All right, and you look well. You haven't changed much since yesterday. Oh, my goodness, it was yesterday, wasn't it? Well, we are seeing a great deal of you lately. Well, well, well. sit down, sit down. Um, uh, uh, Abby, <clears throat> haven't we something to do in the kitchen? Abby? What? You know, the tea things. Oh, yes, yes, of course, the tea things. Well, now you two just make yourselves at home. Just make yourselves at home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where do you want to go for dinner, then? I don't care. I'm not very hungry. Well, I just have breakfast. Suppose we wait till after the show, hmm? Well, that'll make it pretty late, won't it? <laughs> not with the little stinker we're seeing tonight. But what I've heard about it, we'll be at Blake's by ten o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. Are these plays fair to me? You know, I've never seen you walk out on a musical. Somehow they have a humanising effect on you. It wasn't until after our first musical you told me I had nice legs. And I have, too. For a minister's daughter, you know a lot about life. Where do you learn it? In the choir loft. Mm. I'll explain that to you sometime, darling. What? The close connection between eroticism and religion. The religion never gets as high as the choir loft. You know, I've never been able to rationalise it. What? My falling in love with a girl who lives in Brooklyn. Falling in love? You're not stooping to the articulate, are you? <laughs> the only way I can regain my self-respect is to keep you in New York. Did you say keep? No, 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 no. I'm, I've come to the conclusion that you're holding out <laughs> for the legalities. Now, where could we be married in a hurry? Let hmm? me say tonight. I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Now, your father could make even the marriage service sound oh, pedestrian. <laughs> All right, formal, everything formal and legal. But not later than next month. Oh, darling. Hello, Mortimer. <laughs> How are you, Mr. President? Fine, thank you. Just fine. What news have you brought for me? Just this, Mr. President. The country is squarely behind you. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. Where are you up to, Teddy? Panama. Mm, uh, Panama's the cellar. Oh. <laughs> he digs locks for the canal down there. You're very sweet with him, and he's so fond of you. Well, Teddy was always my favourite brother. Favourite? Were there more of you? Well, there's another brother, Jonathan. I never heard of him. Well, we don't like to talk about Jonathan. He left Brooklyn very early, by request. He was the kind of boy who liked to cut worms in two with his teeth. What became of him? Oh, I don't know. He wanted to become a surgeon like Grandfather, but he wouldn't go to medical school first, and his practice got him into trouble. Aren't you going to be late for the theatre? Oh, we're skipping dinner. We don't have to start for half an hour. Oh, well then, I'll leave you alone together again. <laughs> don't bother, darling. I'm going to run over to speak to Father. Before I go out for you, Mort, he likes to pray over me a little. <laughs> oh, by the way, Aunt Abby, I'm going to marry her. What? Oh, darling! Martha! Martha! Come here. I've got the most wonderful news. Mortimer and Elaine are going to be married. Married? Oh, Mortimer. Oh, we hoped it would happen like this. Oh, Elaine must be the happiest girl in the world. Happy? <laughs> Just look at her leaping over those gravestones. Oh, by the way, I left a large envelope around here last week. It was one of the chapters of my book on Thoreau. Have you seen it? Well, if you left it here, it must be here somewhere. Well, uh, when are you going to be married? There must be something more you can tell us about Elaine. Elaine? Oh, yes, Elaine. thought it was brilliant. What was, dear? My chapter on Thoreau. Oh. oh. Well, when Elaine comes back, I think we ought to have a little celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, isn't there some of that Lady Baltimore cake left? Oh, yes. And I'll open a bottle of wine. Oh, and to think that it happened in this room. Oh, no. Where could I have put it? I do hope the play will be something you can enjoy for once. It may be something romantic. What's the name of it? Murder will out. Oh, dear. Mm, oh. When the curtain goes up, the first thing you'll see will be a dead body. Now, could it be in the window seat, I wonder? Oh, my God! Uh, Aunt Abby, 
you were going to make plans for Teddy to go to that, that sanatorium, the Happy Dale. Yes, dear, it's all arranged. <laughs> Dr. Harper was here today and brought the papers for Teddy to sign. Here they are. He's got to sign them right away. Yes, that's what Dr. Harper thinks. Then there won't be any legal difficulties after we pass on. Here's the cake. Oh, yes, dear. Put it down there, will you, Martha? He's got to sign them this minute. He's down in the cellar. Now get him up here right away. Oh, there's no such hurry as that. No. Oh, well, Teddy starts working on the canal. You can't get his mind on anything else. Teddy's got to go to Happy Dale now. Tonight. Oh, no, dear. That's not until after we're gone. Now, 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 listen, darlings. I'm frightfully sorry, but I've got some shocking news for you. You know we've sort of humoured Teddy because we thought he was harmless. Well, he is harmless. He was harmless. That's why he has to go to Happy Dale. Why he has to be confined. Mortimer, why have you suddenly turned against Teddy, your own brother? Teddy's killed a man. Nonsense, dear. There's a body in the window seat. Yes, dear, we know. You know? Well, of course, dear, but it's nothing to do with Teddy. Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Forget you ever saw the gentleman. Forget? We never but, dreamed you'd look. But, 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 but who is he? His name is Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's really all I know about him, except that he's a Methodist. That's all you know about him? What, what, what's he doing here? I mean, what's happened to him? He died. Aunt Martha, men don't just get into window seats and die. Oh, no. But he died first. How? Now, Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. Well, how did the poison get in the wine? Well, we put it in wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odour. You put it in the wine? Yes. And I put Mr. Hotkins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming. So you knew what you'd done. You, you didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body. Well, not a tea, dear. That, that wouldn't have been very nice. <sighs> now, Mortimer, you know the whole thing. Just forget about it. I do think Martha and I have the right to our own little secrets. But, but what are we going to do? I mean, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? There's a body in that window seat. Yes, dear, Mr. Hoskins. Well, I can't turn you over to the police. But what am I going to do? Oh, well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. But Mr. Hotchkiss. Hoskins, dear. Oh, well, whatever his name is, you can't leave him there. Oh, we don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down in the cellar now, digging the lock. You mean you're going to bury Mr. Hotchkiss in the cellar? Oh, yes, dear. Well, that's what we did with the others. You can't bury Mr. Others? It's the other gentleman. When you say others, do you mean others? More than one others? Oh, yes, dear. Now, let me see. This is 11. Isn't it, Abby? Oh, no, dear. This makes 12. No, I think you're wrong, Abby. This is only 11. No, dear, because I remember when Mr. Hoskins first came in, it occurred to me that he would make just a round dozen. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one. Oh, but I was counting the first one. So that makes it 12. Anyway, they're all down in the cellar. Oh, all right, now. 12. Now, 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 tell me, who was the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. Of course, I still think we can't claim full credit for him uh, because he just died. Martha means without any help from us. You see, Mr. Midgley came here looking for a room. It was after you moved to New York. Yes, and it didn't seem right for that lovely room to be going to waste when there were so many people who needed it. He was such a lonely old man. Mm, all his kith and kin were dead, and it left him so forlorn and unhappy. And we felt so sorry for him. And then, when his heart attack came on, and he sat dead in that chair, looking so peaceful. You remember, Martha? We made up our minds then and there that if we could help other lonely old men to that same peace, we would. Teddy had been digging in Panama, down in the cellar, and he thought Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim. Yes, and that meant he had to be buried immediately. So we all took him down to Panama and put him in the lock. That's why we told you not to worry now, because we know exactly what has to be done. And that's how this all started. That man walking in here and dropping dead. Yes, of course. You see, we realized we couldn't depend on that happening again. So... 
Uh, you remember those jars of poison that have been up on the shelves in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? And you know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. Well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic and then add half a teaspoonful of strychnine and then just a pinch of cyanide. Mm. So it have quite a kick. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. <laughs> well, I'll have to get things started in the kitchen. Mortimer, I wish you could stay for dinner. I'm trying out a new recipe. I couldn't eat a thing. I'll come and help you, dear. Well, I feel so much better now. Oh, you have to wait for Elaine, haven't you, Mortimer? How happy you must be. Well, dear... I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Oh, what am I getting to do? What am I getting to do? Oh, it's you, Elaine. Hello. Uh, now, you run along home, and I'll call you up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, you know I always call you up every day or two. But we're going to the theatre tonight. No, no, we're not. Well, why not? Elaine, something's come up. What, darling? Mortimer, you've lost your job. No, 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 I haven't lost my job. I'm just not covering that play tonight. Now, you run along home, Elaine. I've got to know what's happened. You can tell me. No, dear, I can't. But if we're going to be married. Married? Have you forgotten? Oh, yes. Well, as far as I know, that's still on. Now, you run along home, Elaine. I've got to do something. Listen, you can't propose to me one minute and throw me out of the house the next. Now, look, Elaine, you're a sweet girl and I love you, but I have something on my mind and I want you to go home and wait till I call you. Well, don't try to be masterful. <laughs> But when we're married and I have problems to face, I hope you're less tedious and uninspired. And when we're married, if we're married, I hope I find you early. Uh, Elaine, Elaine. Hello. Hello. That's the doorbell, dear, not the telephone. Oh. How do you do? Come in. I understand you have a room to rent. Uh, yes. Won't you step in? Are you the lady of the house? Yes, yes. I am Miss Brewster, and this is my sister, another Miss Brewster. My name is Gibbs. Um, uh, would you sit down? Uh, let me talk to you. May I see the room? Oh, uh, uh, well, why don't you sit oh, down for a minute Hold and let's get acquainted. Well, that won't do much good if I don't like the room. Is uh, Brooklyn your home? I haven't got a home. I live in a hotel. <laughs> don't like it. Are your family Brooklyn people? I haven't got any family. All alone in the world? Yes. Well, Martha, perhaps some wine. You've come to just the right house, Mr. Gibbs. Now, do sit down. Oh, what church do you go to? There's an Episcopal church practically next door. I'm Presbyterian. I used to be. Is there always this much noise? Oh, he doesn't live with us. Well, I'd really like to see the room. Well, it's upstairs. Won't you try a glass of our wine before we go up? Uh, never touch it. Well, we make this ourselves. It's elderberry wine. Oh, elderberry wine? Mm. Haven't tasted elderberry wine since I was a boy. Thank you. Do you have your own elderberry bushes? No, uh, but the cemetery is full of them. Do you serve meals? Well, we might. But first, just see whether you like our wine. Oh, there must be somebody. Just try this, Mr. Gibbs. Well, why don't you try it here? Hmm? And he's... Stop! Stop! What I mean is, well, this this has developed into a very bad habit. Now, Mortimer, we don't try to stop you from doing things you like to do, and I don't see why you should interfere with us. Hello. All right, Al. I'll see the first act, and I'll pan the hell out of it. But look, Al, you've got to do something for me. Get hold of O'Brien, our lawyer. Now, get him to meet me at the theatre. Now, don't let me down. OK? I'm starting now. I've got to go to the theatre. But before I go, will you promise me something? Well, we'd have to know what it was first. You know I'd do anything in the world for you, and I want you to do just this little thing for me. Well, what do you want us to do? Don't do anything. 
Don't let anyone in and leave Mr. Hoskins right where he is in the window seat. Why? I want time to think. Well, we were planning on holding the service before dinner. Service? Certainly. You don't think we'd bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service, do you? But can't that wait till I get back? Oh, then you could join us. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, Mortimer, you will enjoy the service, especially the hymns. Do you remember how beautifully Mortimer used to sing in the choir before his voice changed? Uh, and, rem and remember, you're not going to let anyone in while I'm gone. It's a promise? Well, oh, Martha, yes. We can do that now that Mortimer's cooperating with us. Well, all right, Mortimer. Uh, uh, have you got some paper? Uh, now, I'll get back just as soon as I can. Well, uh, will this do? That's fine, yes. It'll save time if I write my review on the way to the theatre. Goodbye. Uh, oh. You know, Mortimer didn't seem quite himself today. Well, of course, that's only natural. He's just become engaged. That always makes a man nervous. Abby, if Mortimer's coming back for the service, we shall need another hymnal. You know, dear, it's really my turn to read the service. But since you weren't here when Mr. Hoskins came, I want you to do it. Oh, that's very nice of you, dear. Uh, but are you sure you want me to? Well, it's only fair. <laughs> well, I think I'll wear my black bombers in and mother's old brooch. I'll go, dear. Oh, we promised Mortimer we wouldn't let anyone in. Well, who do you suppose it is? Wait a minute. I'll look. Oh, it's two men. And I've never seen them before. Are you sure? Yes. And there's a car at the curb. They must have come in there. Well, let me look. Do you recognize them? No, they're strangers to me. We'll just have to pretend we're not home. Oh, hide here behind the screen. Go on, get out. All right. Just one more time. Come in, Doctor. <clears throat> this is the home of my youth. Oh. As a boy, I couldn't wait to escape from this place now. I'm glad to escape back into it. Ah, yeah, yeah, Charlie. It's a fine hideout. Hmm. Yeah, the family must still live here. I hope there's a fatted calf awaiting the return of the prodigal. Yeah, yeah. I'm hungry. Look, Johnny. Hmm? Wine. As though we were expected. Oh, who are you? <coughs> and what are you doing here? Why, Aunt Abby? Aunt Martha, it's Jonathan. You get out of here. But uh, it, it's Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan. You get out of here. But I am Jonathan, and this is Dr. Einstein. And he's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein, Dr. Herman Einstein. Well, who are you? You're not our nephew, Jonathan. I... See, you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster bought in England. Oh. And you, Aunt Martha, still the high collar to hide the scar where Grandfather's acid burned you? His voice is like Jonathan's, Abby. Have you been in an accident? No. <clears throat> My face. Dr. Einstein is responsible for that. He's a plastic surgeon. He changes people's faces. And don't worry, ladies. The last five years, I give Johnny three new faces. I give him another one right away. This last face, well, I, I was intoxicated at the time. You see, doctor, you see what you've done to me, even my own family. Johnny, Johnny, you're a home in this lovely house. How often he tells me about Brooklyn, about this house. About his aunts that he loves so much. Ah, I promised Dr. Einstein that no matter how rushed we were in passing through Brooklyn, I'd take time to bring him here for one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there wouldn't be enough. Oh, Abby, it's a pretty good-sized pot roast. Hot roast? Yeah, I think the least we could do Thank is... you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Well... We'll hurry it along. Oh, yes. And if we had a few more vegetables... Well, lots of potatoes. Find something else. Well, 
Johnny, where do we go from here? We've got to think fast. The police. The police have got pictures of that face. Mm. I've got to operate on you right away. We've got to find some place for that. And we've got to find a place for Mr. Spenalzo, Oh, too. don't waste any worry on that rat. But, Johnny, we got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spanalzo. But you can't leave a dead body in the car. You shouldn't have killed him, Johnny. He's a nice fellow. He gives us a lift. And what happens? He said I looked like Boris Karloff. You did that to me. Ah, take it easy, Johnny. Now, now, look. Your aunts, they don't want us here. We're here for dinner, aren't we? Oh, yeah, but after dinner. Leave it to me, doctor. I'll handle it. This house will be our headquarters for years. Oh, that would be beautiful, Johnny. This nice, quiet house. And those aunts of yours, what sweet ladies. I love them already. I get the bags, yeah? Doctor, we must wait until we're invited. But you just said that... We'll that... be ah. invited. And if they say no... <laughs> Doctor, two helpless old women. <laughs> oh, it's like comes through a beautiful dream. Only I hope we're not dreaming. It's so peaceful. That's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. aunties, those five years in Chicago were amongst the busiest and happiest of my life. And from Chicago, we go to South Bend, Indiana, and there we <laughs> hit the <laughs> fascinating... They wouldn't be interested in our experience in Indiana. Well, Jonathan, you've led a very interesting life, I'm sure, but we, we really shouldn't have allowed you to talk so late. My meeting Dr. Einstein in London, I might say, changed the whole course of my life. You remember, I'd been in South Africa in the diamond business, then Amsterdam, the diamond market. I wanted to go back to South Africa, and Dr. Einstein made it possible for me. When we take off the bandages, his face looked so different, the nurse had to introduce me. Hmm. You know, I think we'll go back to that face, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's safe now. Well, I know you both want to get to... Uh, uh, where you're going. My dear aunts, I'm so full of that delicious dinner, I'm unable to move a muscle. Yeah, he's nice here. Well, after all, it's very late. I found it! I found it! What did you find, Teddy? The story of my life. My biography. Here's the picture I was telling you about, General. Here we are, both of us. President Roosevelt and General Gotor's the Calibra Cat. That's me, General, and that's you. My, how I've changed. Well, of course you've changed. That picture hasn't been taken yet. We haven't even started work on Calibra Cut. We're still digging locks. So, General, we'll both go to Panama and inspect the new lock. No, no, Teddy. Not to Panama. No, we go some other time. Panama's a long way off. Nonsense. It's down in the cellar. The cellar? Well, we'll let him dig the Panama Canal in the cellar. General Gertles! As President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, and the man who gave you this job, I demand that you accompany me to the inspection of the new lock. Oh, uh, all right, uh, Mr. President. We go to Panama. Fine, fine. Follow me, General. Lead on, Mr. President. I am following. Uh, Jonathan, hmm? uh, there's a very nice little hotel just three blocks down. Aunt the... Martha, this is my home. Oh, but Jonathan, you can't stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need a place to sleep. You remembered this afternoon that as a boy I could be very disagreeable. It wouldn't be very pleasant for any of us if I oh, had... Uh, to... Well, perhaps we'd better let them stay here tonight, Abby. Well, well, just overnight, Jonathan. Ah, that's settled. Now, if you'll get my room ready... It only needs airing out. Yes. Well, you see, we keep it ready to show our lodgers. Hey, Johnny! Down in the cellar... Dr. Einstein, my dear aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, you fixed it. 
Well, you're sleeping here tonight. Please get our room ready immediately. Well, if you insist... Well, for tonight only, then. Yes, but it's all very awkward, that is. Yeah, never mind. we put on the title. Johnny. Hmm? Johnny, when I go down in the cellar, what do you think I find? What? The Panama Canal. The Panama Canal. It just fits, Mr. Spinalzo. It's a hole, Teddy Doug. Six feet long and three feet wide. Down there? You'd think they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinout so along. <laughs> That's hospitality. <laughs> Rather a good joke on my aunts. They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. How do we get him in? Yes. Yes, yes. Don't just walk him in through the door. I got it. Hmm? We'll drive the car up between the house and the cemetery. Ah. Then, when they've gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinalzo in through that window. Oh. Jonathan. Huh? Your room is ready. Oh, then you can go to bed. We're moving the car up behind the house. Oh, it's all right when it is until the morning. I, I, I don't want to leave it in the street. That might be against the law. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's quite right. Come on, Doctor. Happy, what are we going to do? Well... We are not going to let them stay more than one night in this house for one thing. What would the neighbours think? People coming in with one face and going out with another. But what are we going to do about Mr. Hoskins? Oh, Mr. Hoskins. Can't be very comfortable for him in the window seat. And he's been so patient, poor dear. Well, I think Teddy had better get Mr. Hoskins downstairs right away. Abby. I will not invite Jonathan to the funeral service. Oh, no, dear. We'll wait until they've gone to bed, and then we'll come down and hold the service. Yes. Oh, well, General Gothels was very pleased. He says the canal is just the right size. Teddy. Teddy. There's been another yellow fever victim. Dear me. This will be a shock to the General. Then we mustn't tell him about it. But it's his department. Oh, no, we mustn't tell him, Teddy. It will just spoil his visit. I'm sorry, Aunt Abby. It's out of my hands. He'll have to be told army regulations, you know. No, Teddy, we must keep it a secret. Yes. A, a state secret? Yes, yes, a state secret. Oh, Promise. You have the word of the President of the United States. Now, Teddy, you go down back into the cellar, and when I call you, you come up and take the poor man down to the canal. And we'll come down later and hold the service. Uh, where is the poor devil? He's in the window seat. Oh, seems to be spreading. We've never had yellow fever there before. Mm. Martha, when Jonathan and Dr. Einstein come back, let's see if we can get them to go to bed right away. Oh, yes. And then by the time they're asleep, we'll be dressed for the funeral. Mm. Jonathan, your room is waiting for you. You can go right up. Oh, well, I, I'm afraid we don't keep Brooklyn ours, but you two run along to bed. Oh, no, no, you must be very tired, both of you. And we don't go to bed this early. Well, you should. It's time I came back to take care of you. Well, we were planning to go until... Martha. The... <sighs> well, come on, then, Doctor. Oh. We, we, we'll go and unpack. Yeah, yeah. Good night, Aunt Abby. Good night, Aunt Martha. Good night, Jonathan. Good night, Doctor. Good night, ladies. Now, Teddy. Everything's ready in the canal. Good. Now for the yellow fever victim. Oh, poor fella. It's very sad. Lift the lid, Martha. Very well. That's right. Oh, he's very, very nice looking, considering he's a Methodist. Now, lift, Teddy. That's right. Where you go? Oh, poor devil's dropping like flies. Now we'll go and change for the funeral. Oh, yes, my black bombazine. Mm. Well, come on, dear. All right, all right, Johnny. Mm. Now, they've gone to bed. Good. Uh, I'll get the window open. You go round and hand Mr. Spinalzo through. No, he's too heavy for me. You go outside and push. I stay here and pull. Then together we get him down to Panama. Oh, all right. I'll take a look round outside the house. You open the window. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, who 
left the window seat open, I wonder. Johnny. Hmm. Okay. Aliup. Oh, oh, wait. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, uh, you lost a leg somewhere. Uh, uh, now I got him. Come on. Oops. Oh, that was me, Johnny. I slipped. Be more careful. Well, his shoe came off. Ah, yes. All oh, right, Johnny, I got him. Johnny, somebody at the door. Go quick. What about... No, no, no. A manager here. Go quick. Oh. Oh. Ah, come in. Where's that shoe? Oh, the other leg. In you go. That's it. Ah. I live next door. Then what are you doing here? I think you'd better explain what you're doing here. We happen to live here. You don't live here. I'm in this house every day and I've never seen you before. Where are Miss Abby and Miss Martha? What have you done to them? Perhaps we'd better introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Delighted. Happy. Dr. Einstein? And I'm Jonathan Brewster. Oh, you're, you're Jonathan. I see you've heard of me. Why did you come here at this time of night? I thought, thought I saw someone prowling around the house. I suppose it was you. Is that your car? You saw someone at the car? Yes. What else did you see? Just that, that's all. I think you're lying. Oh, I think she tells the truth, uh, Charlie. We let her go now. I think she's lying. I think mm. she's dangerous. Oh, take your hands off me. It's going to be a private funeral. Oh, Teddy, Teddy, tell these men who I am. Uh, that's my daughter, Alice. Charles! No, no, Teddy! What's the matter? Teddy? We caught a burglar, a, a sneak thief. Go back to your room. <laughs> oh, Mortimer. Mortimer, where have you been? To the Nora Bay's theatre, and I should have known better. Good Lord. Who are you? That is your brother, Jonathan. <gasps> and this is Dr. Einstein. I've come home, Mortimer. Who did you say this was, Aunt Abby? It's your brother, Jonathan. He's had his face changed. Dr. Einstein performed the operation. Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, you always were a horror. Hmm? But you have to look like one. Oh, no, I know. Easy, Johnny, easy. Mortimer, have you forgotten the things I used to do to you when we were boys? Remember the time you were tied to the bedpost? It is Jonathan. Yes, I remember. I remember you as the most detestable, vicious, venomous form of animal life I ever knew. Hmm? Well, now, 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 don't you two boys start quarrelling again the minute you've seen each other. There won't be any fighting, Aunt Abby. Jonathan, you're not wanted here. Get out. Dr. Einstein and I have been invited to stay. Not in this house. We're just for tonight. I don't want him anywhere near me. Yes, but we did invite them for tonight, and it wouldn't be very nice to go back on our word. All right, all right. But the first thing in the morning, out. Now, where are they sleeping? Well, we've put them in Jonathan's old room. Well, I'm sleeping in that room. I'm here to stay. Uh, Johnny... We sleep down here. You bet your life you sleep down here. You we sleep don't... on the sofa, Johnny, and I sleep on the window seat. Yes. <laughs> you sleep on the window seat. <laughs> the window seat? No, no, but, uh, no, now let's not argue about it. I mean, the, that window seat's good enough for me. I mean, oh. well, well, I'll sleep on the window seat. Uh, you know, uh, Johnny, oh, all this argument, it makes me think of Mr. Spinalzo. Spinalzo? Uh, well, well, now, Mortimer, it isn't really necessary to inconvenience you like this. We'll sleep down here. Jonathan, your sudden consideration for me is very unconvincing. Come on, Doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be packed in a few minutes. Right, yeah, and yeah, then you can have the room, Mortimer. You're just wasting your time. I told you, I'm sleeping down here. Mortimer, Mortimer. What's the matter, dear? I've almost been killed. You've almost been... Abby... Martha? Oh, no, no, it was Jonathan. You, you see, he mistook her for a sneak thief. No, it was more than that. He, he's some kind of maniac. Mortimer, I'm afraid of him. Well, my darling, you're trembling. Have you any smelling salts, aren't you? No, but do you think some hot tea or coffee? Coffee. Make some for me, too, and some sandwiches. I haven't had any dinner. Oh, we'll make something for both of you. Do you know what time it is? Why aren't you in bed? It's after twelve. 
twelve. Elaine, you've got to go home. What? No, no. You wanted some sandwiches. It won't take a minute. We'll make a nice supper for both of you. Oh, and we'll open a bottle of wine. Yes, yes, all right. Let's have a bottle of wine. No, no, no wine. Mortimer, what's going on in this house? What, what, what do you mean? What's going on in this house? You were supposed to take me to dinner in the theatre tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I said I would. And five minutes later, you threw me out of the house. And tonight, just after your brother tries to strangle me, you want to chase me home. Now, listen, Mr. Brewster, before I go home, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. In fact, I love you so much, I can't marry you. Have you gone crazy? Well, I, I don't think so. But it, well, it's just a matter of time. You see, insanity. you see, insanity runs in my family. In fact, it practically gallops. That's why I can't marry. Now, wait a minute. You've got to do better than that. No, dear, there's a taint in the Brewster blood. But just because Teddy's a little... No, no, it goes way back. I mean, the first Brewster, the one who came over on the Mayflower. You know, in those days, the Indians used to scalp the settlers. Well, he used to scalp the Indians. Mortimer, that's ancient history. No, 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 the whole family. I mean, take my grandfather. He tried his patent medicines out on dead people to be sure he wouldn't kill them. Made a million dollars. And then there's Jonathan. You just said he was a maniac. Well, he tried to kill you. But he's your brother, not you. I'm in love with you. And there's Teddy, too. I mean, you know Teddy. Well, he thinks he's Roosevelt. No, dear. No Brewster should marry. I realise now that if I'd met my father in time, I'd have stopped him. Now, darling, all this doesn't prove you're crazy. Look, look at your aunts. They're Brewsters, aren't they? And they're the sanest, sweetest people I've ever known. Mm. Even they have their peculiarities. My God, there's another one in there. No, Mortimer, you can't tell me anything about your aunts. I'm not going to. Elaine, you've got to go home. Something very important has just come up. If you think you're going to get out of this by pretending you're insane, you're crazy. Maybe you're not going to marry me, but I'm going to marry you. I love you, you don't. Well, if you love me, will you get the hell out of here? Take me home, won't you? I'm afraid. Afraid? A little walk through the cemetery? Well, good night, dear. I'll call you up in a day or two. You... You critic! Aunt Abby, come here. Yes, dear, what is it? Where is Elaine? I thought you promised me not to let anyone in this house while I was gone. Well, Jonathan just walked in. I don't mean Jonathan. And Dr. Einstein was with him. I don't mean Dr. Einstein. Who's that in the window seat? Well, we told you, Mr. Hoskins. It is not Mr. Hoskins. Look. Now, who can that be? Are you trying to tell me you've never seen this man before? Certainly. But this is a fine how do you do. It's getting so that anybody thinks he can walk into this house. Now, Aunt Abby, now, don't you try to get out of this. That's another of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? Well, that man's an imposter. And if he came here to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken. Aunt Abby, you admitted that you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Yes, I did. Well, this man couldn't have just got the idea from Mr. Hoskins. By the way, where is Mr. Hoskins? Oh, well, he must have gone to Panama. Oh, you buried him? No, not yet. He's just down there waiting for the service, poor dear. We haven't had a minute what with Jonathan in the house. Jonathan? We've always wanted to hold a double funeral... But I will not read a service over a total stranger. A stranger? Aunt Abby, how can I believe you? I mean, there are 12 men in the cellar and you admit that you poisoned them. Yes, I did, dear. But you don't think I'd stoop to telling a fib. Martha! Oh, Mortimer, I'd like to have a word with you. A word's about all you'll have time for, Jonathan. You're beginning to bore me. Yes, dear. Uh, Martha! Just look and see what's in that window seat. No. No, Aunt Abby. Oh, oh. Oh, Jonathan. Hmm? Jonathan, let Aunt Martha see what's in the window seat. Aunt Abby, I owe you an apology. I have very good news for you. Jonathan is leaving. He's taking Dr. Einstein and their cold companion with him. Jonathan, you're my brother. You're a Brewster. Now, I'm going to give you a chance to get away and take the evidence with you. Now, you can't ask for much more than that, can you? I'll count up to three. One, (laughs) two... (laughs) Three. Very well. In that case, I'll have to call the police. Are you still giving me orders after seeing what happened to Mr. Spinalzo? Spinalzo? I knew he was a foreigner. Remember, what happened to Mr. Spinalzo can happen to you, too. Hello, Miss Abby. Oh, Officer O'Hara. Is there something we can do for you? Well, I saw your lights on, and I thought there might be sickness in the house. Uh, oh... 
Oh, you've got company. Well, I, I'm sorry I disturbed you. <laughs> no, 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 don't go, officer. Don't go. No, no, don't go. Officer O'Hara, this is our nephew, Mortimer. Oh, pleased to meet you. And this is another nephew, Jonathan. Oh, pleased to make your acquaintance. <clears throat> well, it must be nice having your nephews visiting you, Miss Brewster. Are they going to stay for a bit? I'm staying. My brother Jonathan is just leaving. I've, uh, I've met you before, haven't I, Mr. Jonathan? I'm afraid not. He hasn't been home for years. Ah, your face looks familiar to me. Maybe I've seen a picture of you somewhere. I I don't think so. Uh, yes, Jonathan, I'd hurry if I were you. Your things are all packed, aren't they? Ah, well, you'll be wanting to say your goodbyes. I'll be running along. Yeah, but, but, but what's the rush? I mean, I'd like to have you around and, uh, until my brother goes. Well, I just dropped in to make sure everything was all right. Oh, well, we're going to have some coffee in a minute. I mean, won't you join us? Oh, well. Oh, I forgot the coffee. Oh, I'd better make some more sandwiches. I ought to know your appetite by this time, Officer O'Hara. Don't bother. I'm due to clock in in a few minutes. Well, you can have a cup of coffee with us. I mean, my brother will be gone soon. Well, sit down. Oh. Uh, you're... You're not Mortimer Brewster, the dramatic critic, are you? Yes. Oh, well, I'm certainly glad to meet you, Mr. Brewster. We are in the same line of business. <laughs> we are? Yes. I am a playwright. Eh? Oh, this being on the police force is just temporary. Well, how long have you been on the force? Twelve years. Oh. I, I'm collecting material for a play. Oh, I bet it's a honey. Oh, well, it ought to be. With all the drama I see being a cop, Mr. Brewster, you've got no idea what goes on in Brooklyn. I think I have. Uh, i got to go and clock in. <laughs> Wait a minute, O'Hara. Uh, that, 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 um, that play of yours, I'm... I, be able to help you. You would? Mm. Oh, it was fate my walking in here tonight. Look, uh, I'll tell you the plot. Ah, you're on your way, eh, Jonathan? Mm. Good. You haven't got much time, you know. But um, haven't you left something in the window seat? Huh? You can't go without all of your things. <laughs> well, then, Harry, it was nice meeting you. I'll eh? see you again and we'll talk about your play. Oh, I, I'm not leaving now, Mr. Brewster. Why not? Well, you just offered to help me with my play, didn't you? You and me are going to write my play together. Well, I can't do that, O'Hara. I'm not a creative writer. I'll do the creating. You just put the words to it. But, O'Hara... No, Mr. Brewster, I'm not leaving this house till I tell you the plot. In that case, Mortimer, we'll be running along. You, 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 you can't do it yet. You've got to take everything with you. Now, now look, O'Hara, you run along now, eh? I mean, my brother's just going. I can <laughs> wait. I've been waiting 12 years. Here's the coffee. Oh, I'm sorry I was so long. Don't, don't bring that in here. O'Hara, would you join us for a bite in the kitchen? Are you hmm? sure you don't mind eating in the kitchen, Mr. O'Hara? And where else would you eat? Uh, goodbye, Jonathan. Mm. Nice to see you again. Come on, Mortimer. I'm glad you came to Brooklyn, Jonathan, because it gives me a chance to throw you out. I'll get going now. All... Three of you. Doctor, this affair between my brother and me has got to be settled. Now, now, Johnny, we got trouble enough. Your brother gives us a chance to get away. What more could you ask? You don't understand. This goes back a good many years. Now, now, Johnny, let's get going. We are not going. We're going to sleep right here. With a cop in the kitchen? And Mr. Spinelso in the window seat. Oh, that's all he's got on us. We'll take Mr. Spinelso, dump him in the sea, and come right back. Here. Yeah. Now, Johnny, Johnny, Doctor, you know when I make up my mind... Oh, yeah, yeah, when you make up your mind, you lose your head. Brooklyn ain't a good place for you. Doctor. Oh, okay, okay, we got to stick together. Right. Hide our bags in the cellar. Okay, okay. Oh, move fast. Spinelso can go out the same way he came in. Hey, Johnny. Huh? Come quick. Well, what's the matter? That hole in the cellar. Oh, yeah? We got an ace in the hole. Look. A stick. Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> yes. Mortimer. I thought I told you to get out We of are it. not going. Oh, we are not. Mm -hmm. What well, do you want O'Hara to know what's in that window seat? We are staying here. All right. This gets me rid of you and Officer O'Hara at the same time. If you tell O'Hara what's in the window seat, I'll tell him what's down in the cellar. The cellar? There's an elderly gentleman down there who seems to be very dead. Well, what were you doing in the cellar? Never mind about that. What's he doing in the cellar? No, 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 thanks, ma'am. 
I've had plenty. Now, what are you going to say to O'Hara? Uh, Mr. Brewster, your aunts want to hear my play too. Uh, shall I get them in here? Uh, no, no, O'Hara, you, you can't tell us now. You, you've got to clock in. Oh, to hell with clocking in. I'll, I'll get your aunts in here and tell you the plot. No, no, O'Hara, not in front of all these people. We are, we'll get together alone um, someplace later. How about the back room at Kelly's? Fine. You go and clock in and I'll meet you at Kelly's. Well, why don't you two go down to the cellar? Well, that's all right with me. Where is it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, uh, we'll go to Kelly's. But but uh, you're going to clock in on the way. All right. That'll only take me a couple of minutes. I'll ditch him and be back in five minutes. Wait for me. Hmm. We'll wait for him, Doctor. I've waited a great many years for a chance like this. We got him right where we want him. Did he look guilty? Have they gone? Oh, we thought we heard somebody leave. Oh, just, just Mortimer, and he'll be back in a few minutes. Is there any food left in the kitchen? Get something for us to eat while we bury Mr. Spinalzo in the cellar. Oh, no. Oh, but he can't stay in our cellar. No, Jonathan, you've got to take him with you. There's a friend of Mortimer's downstairs waiting for him. A friend of Mortimer? He and Mr. Spinalzo will get along fine together. They're both dead. They must mean Mr. Hoskins, dear. Mr. Yeah. Hoskins? You, 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 you know about what's downstairs? Oh, but of course we do. And he's no friend of Mortimer's. He's one of our gentlemen. Your gentlemen? And we won't have any strangers buried in our cellar. But, but Mr. Mr. Hoskins? Mr. Hoskins isn't a stranger. Besides, there's no room for Mr. Spinalzo. The cellar's crowded already. C -c 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 crowded with what? Well, there are 12 graves down there now. 12 graves? And that leaves very little room, and we are going to need it. You mean you and Aunt Martha have murdered my... Murdered? Oh. Certainly not. It's one of our charities. What we've been doing is a mercy. So you just take your Mr. Spinalzo out of here. You've done that. Here in this house. And you buried them down below. Johnny, we've been chased all over the world. They stay right here in Brooklyn and do just as good as you do. What? Well, you've got 12 and they've got 12. I've got 13. No, 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 Johnny, 12. 13. There's Mr. Spinalzo, Aye. then the first one in London, Aye. two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, two in San Francisco, one in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Phoenix. The filling station. Oh. The three in Chicago and the one in South Bend. That makes a... Thirteen. Oh, you can't count the one in South Bend. He died of pneumonia. He wouldn't have got pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. No, Charlie, he died of pneumonia. He don't count. He counts with me. I say thirteen. No, no, Charlie. You got twelve, and they got twelve. The old ladies are just as good as you are. Oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more. That's all, just one more. Well, here I am. Ah, Mortimer, come in. Hasn't Mortimer come back yet, Martha? No. Oh, it's a terrible thing they're doing downstairs, burying a good Methodist with a foreigner. I will not have our cellar desecrated. It'll just have to be undone. Yes, but we promised Mr. Hoskins a full Christian burial. Ah, right. Now, where's Teddy? Mortimer, where have you been? I've been over to Dr. Gilchrist's. I've got his signature on Teddy's commitment papers. Mortimer, what's the matter with you? Running round getting papers signed at a time like this. Do you know what Jonathan's doing? He's putting Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinalzo in together. Oh, he is, is he? Well, let him. Is Teddy in his room? Oh, Teddy won't be any help. When he signs these commitment papers, I can tackle Jonathan. Well, what have they got to do with it? Well, you had to go and tell Jonathan about those 12 graves. Now, if I can make Teddy responsible for those, I can protect you. Don't you see? No, I don't see. Come along, Martha. We are going for the police. The police? You can't go for the police. Why can't we? Because if you tell the police about Mr. Spalazzo, they'll find Mr. Hoskins too. And that might make them curious. And they'd find out about the other 12 gentlemen. Mortimer, we know the police better than you do. I don't think they'd pry into our private affairs if we asked them not to. But if they found your 12 gentlemen, they'd have to report to headquarters. And you couldn't expect a judge and a jury to understand. 
Oh, George Cullman would. Yes, we know him very well. He always comes to church to pray, uh, just before the elections. Yes, and he's coming here to tea someday, he promised. Oh, Abby, we must speak to him again about that. He's so lonely since his wife died. Yes, yes, poor man, of course. Well, now come along to the police, Martha. No, you can't. I won't let you. You can't leave this house and you can't have Judge Cullum to tea. Well, if you're not going to do something about Mr. Spinalzo, we are. I am going to do something. Now, we may have to call the police in later, but if we do, I want to be ready for them. You've got to get Jonathan out of this house. Yes, and Mr. Spinalzo, too. Oh, will you please let me do this my own way? I mean, I've got to see Teddy first. Well, if they're not out of here by the morning, Mortimer, we are going to call the police. They'll be out. I promise you. Oh, Oh, Lavi, that's a relief, isn't it? Yes, if Mortimer's really going to do something at last, it just means that Jonathan's going to a lot of unnecessary trouble downstairs. Shall we better tell him? Oh, Jonathan, hmm? you might as well stop what you're doing in the cellar. It's all done. Well, it'll just have to be undone. You're all going to be out of this house by morning. Mortimer's promised. Oh, are we? Oh, well, in that case, you and Aunt Martha can go to bed and have a pleasant night's sleep. Yes, come, Abby. Good night, Auntie. No, not good night, Jonathan. Goodbye. By the time we get up, you'll be out of this house. Mortimer's promised. And he has a way of doing it, too. Oh, then Mortimer is back. Oh, yes, yes, he's up there talking to Teddy. Goodbye, Jonathan. Goodbye, Jonathan. Perhaps you'd better say goodbye to Mortimer. Oh, you'll see Mortimer. Yes, I'll see Mortimer. Oh, oh, well, there now. That's all fixed up smooth like a lake. Nobody would ever know they were down there. Ah, now, come on, Charlie, let's go up to bed, yes? You're forgetting, Doctor. What? My brother, Mortimer. Oh, Charlie, tonight... We do that tomorrow or the next day. No, tonight. No. Johnny, please, I'm tired. And tomorrow I got to operate. Yes, you're operating tomorrow, Doctor. But tonight we take care of Mortimer. Okay, we do it. But the quick way. No, Doctor, I think this calls for something special. Where are the instruments? I won't do it, Johnny. I won't do it. Where are they? Oh, yes. You hid them in the cellar. Well, I won't tell you. I'll find them, Doctor. Oh, dear. Ah, Doctor. So, you go now. Hey, Mr. Mortimer. Uh, no, Doctor. I'm waiting for something. Something important. Please, you go now. Dr. Einstein, I have nothing against you personally. You seem to be a nice fellow. Now, take my advice and get out of this house and get just as far away as possible. Now, listen. Johnny's in a bad mood. When he's like this, he's a madman. Things happen. Terrible things. But Jonathan doesn't worry me anymore. Ah, him or don't those plays you'd see teach you anything? About what? Well, at least people in plays act like they got sense. That's more than you do. Oh, you think so, do you? Oh, well, I wish you had to sit through some of the ones I've had to sit through. I mean, take the little opus I saw tonight, for instance. Uh, in this play, there's a man, he's supposed to be bright. He knows he's in a house with murderers. I mean, he ought to know he's in danger. Mm -hmm. He's even been warned to get out of the house. But does he go? No. <laughs> he stays there. Oh. <laughs> I ask you, Doctor, is that what an intelligent person would do? You're asking me? He didn't even have enough sense to be frightened or to be on guard. He just sits there like this, <laughs> waiting to be trussed up. And what do you think they use to tie him up with? What? The curtain cord. Oh, well, why not? A good idea. Very convenient. So there he sits, the big dip, just waiting to be trussed up and gagged. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Doctor. Now, his legs. Yeah. Uh, that's fixed him. You're right about that fellow, Mr. Mortimer. He wasn't very bright. Now, Doctor, we go to work. Oh, please, Johnny, the quick way. Doctor, we are performing before a very distinguished critic. Johnny. Doctor. All right. Let's get it over. All ready, Doctor. Now. Oh, Himmel. That 
idiot, Teddy. Stop him. He'll wake the neighborhood. He goes next. That's all. He goes next. No, no, Johnny, not Teddy. That's where I stop. Not Teddy. We get to Teddy later. We don't get to him at all. We've got to work fast. Uh, yeah, yeah. The quick way. Uh, here, Johnny. Hmm? Yes, Doctor. The quick way. The... Hey, the colonel's got to stop blowing that horn. Oh, it's all right, officer. We're taking the bugle away from There's him. There's going to be hell to pay in the morning. We promised the neighbors he wouldn't do it anymore. It, it won't happen again, officer. I'd better speak to him myself. Hey, Mr. Mortimer. You stood me up. I waited an hour at Kelly's for you. What what's happened to him? Why is he tied up like that? Uh, he was uh, explaining the play he saw tonight. This is what happened to the fella in the play. Did they have that in the play you saw tonight? Ah, they practically stole it from the second act of my play. Why, in my second act, just before the... Well, I, I'd better begin at the beginning. It opens in the theatre, in my mother's dressing room, where I was born. Only I wasn't born yet. Hey? Yes, well, take the gag out. No, 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 we, we leave it. You've got to hear the plot without interrupting. Now, when the curtain goes up, my mother's sitting there making up, see? When all of a sudden, through the door, a man with a black moustache walks in, turns to her and says, Miss Latoire. over her with a hatchet, and I'm tied up in a chair just like you are, Mr. Mortimer. The place is on fire, when all of a sudden, through the window, in comes the mayor of New York. Well, how'd you like me play so far, Doctor? Ah, oh, well, it put Johnny to sleep. Well, if he's got no more interest than that, let him sleep. It's a wonder we're not all asleep. All right, all right. Well, now, it's three days later. Oh. I've been transferred, and I'm under charges. That's because somebody stole me badge, all right? I'm walking my beat when a guy I'm following, it turns out he's really following me. Don't let anybody in. So I figure I'll outsmart him. There's a vacant house on the corner. I goes in. It's cops! I stands there in the dark, and I see the door handle turn. Johnny, Johnny, wake up, wake up. It's cops, cops. Oh, let me get out of I here. I pulls my guns, braces myself against the wall, and I says, Come in! Hello, boys. What's going on here, O'Hara? Hey, Brophy, what do you know? This is Mortimer Brewster. He's going to write me play with me. I'm just telling him the story. Did you have to tie him up to make him listen and get him undone, Clyde? Yeah, OK. Oh, thank you. O'Hara, you better report at the station. The whole force is out looking for you. Did they send you here for me? We didn't know you were here. We came to warn the old ladies there's hell to pay. The colonel blew that bugle in the middle of the night and the neighbours are complaining. The lieutenant says the colonel's got to be put away someplace. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Brewster, i got to get away, so I'll just run through the third act quick. Get away from me! Do you know what time it is, O'Hara? It's after eight o'clock in the morning. It is? Well, Mr. Brewster, them first two acts run a little long, but I don't see what we can leave out. You can leave it all out. I'd better let them know we found you, O'Hara. Hey, who's that guy asleep there? Uh, that's my brother. Well, wake him up, someone. Here, come on, you. Hello, hmm? this wake is up. Brophy. That's it, come on. Tell the lieutenant he can call That's up the right. big manhunt. We got him in the Brewster house. Huh? Do you want us to bring him in? Oh, oh, right, right. We'll hold him right here. The lieutenant's on his way over. So, I've been turned in, huh? All right, you've got me. And I suppose you and that stool pigeon brother of mine there will split the reward. Reward? Grab him. Now, I'll do some turning in. You think my aunts are sweet, charming old ladies, don't you? Well, there are 13 bodies buried in their cellar. Teddy? Teddy? Teddy! What are you talking about? You'd better be careful what you're saying about your aunts. They're friends of ours. 13 bodies? I'll show you where they're buried. Oh, yes. You don't want to go down and see what's in the cellar. Oh, go on down in the cellar with him, Klein. Oh, I'm not so sure I want to be down in the cellar with him. Look at that face. You little... Here. Brophy, get him off me. Here, what do you think you're doing? Take that. Oh, oh thanks, pal. Well, what do you know about that? Come in. 
What the hell are you men doing here? I told you I was going to handle this. Well, sir, we were just about to... What happened to him on the floor there? Did he put up a fight? Oh, this ain't the guy that blows the bugle. This is his brother. He tried to kill Klein. Turn him over. Yeah, right. We, we kind of uh, think he's wanted somewhere. Oh, you kind of think he's wanted somewhere, do you? You guys should look at the circulars we hang up in the station sometimes. Certainly he's wanted. In Indiana. Escaped from the prison for the criminal insane. He's a lifer. Was there a reward mentioned? Yes, and I'm claiming it. He was trying to get us down in the cellar. He said there were 13 bodies buried down there. 13 bodies buried in the cellar? And that didn't tip you off that he came out of a nut house. I thought all along he talked sort of crazy. Oh, it's Shakespeare O'Hara. Where have you been all night? And you uh, needn't bother to tell me. Well, uh, I'd, I've been right here, sir, writing a play with Mortimer Brewster. Oh, yes? Well, you're going to have plenty of time to write that play. Get back and report in your suspended! Uh, wait, but can I come over sometime and, and use the station typewriter, sir? No! And get out of here! Brophy. Yes. Take that guy on the floor somewhere else and bring him to. See what you can find out about his accomplice. His what? The guy that helped him to escape. He's wanted too. No wonder Brooklyn's in the shape it's in with a police force full of flatheads like you. Falling for that kind of a story. Thirteen bodies in the cellar. But there are thirteen bodies in the cellar. Who are you? I'm President Roosevelt. What the hell is this? No, he's the fellow that blows the bugle. Well, Colonel, you've blown your last bugle. Dear me. Well, who's that on the floor? Another yellow fever victim? What? All the bodies in the cellar are yellow fever victims. Brophy, will you get that guy on the floor out of here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, c come on, Colonel. Y you help us. Delighted to be of assistance. That's right. Uh, come on, Captain. And who are you? Uh, Captain, I'm Mortimer Brewster. Are you sure? Uh, of course I'm sure. I'd like to talk to you about my brother, Teddy, the one who blew the bugle. Mr. Brewster, we are not going to talk about that. He's got to be put away. I agree. In fact, it's all arranged. Well, where's he going? Happy Dale. But I want you to know that everything that's happened around here, Teddy's responsible for. Now, those 13 bodies in the cellar... Yes, 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 yes. Those 13 bodies in the cellar. Mm -hmm. It isn't enough that the neighbours are all afraid of him. And he's disturbing the peace with that bugle. But can you imagine what would happen if that cockeyed story about 13 bodies in the cellar got around? And now he's starting a yellow fever scare. Marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> 13 bodies. <laughs> Did you... Uh, do you think anybody would believe that story? Oh, well, you can't tell. <laughs> Some people are just stupid enough. Mm. About a year ago, a crazy guy starts a murder rumour over in Greenpoint, and I had to dig up a half an acre just to prove that... Good morning, Mortimer. Oh, uh, uh, good morning, dear. This is Mr. Witherspoon. He's come to meet Teddy. To meet Teddy? Mr. Witherspoon's the superintendent of Happy Day. Oh, how do you do? do you uh, this is Captain... Lieutenant oh. Rooney. Well, I'm glad you're here, Super, because you're taking him back with you today. Today? I didn't know that... Not uh... today. Uh, look, Elaine, I've got a lot of business to attend to, so you run along home and I'll call you up. Nuts. Hmm? I had no idea it was this immediate. The papers are all signed. He goes today. How dare you? You men will find out that I'm no Molly Cottle. When the President of the United States is treated like that, what's the country coming to? There's your man, Super. Just, just, just a minute. Uh, Mr. President, I have very good news for you. Your term of office is over. Oh, is this March the 4th? Practically. Well, let's see. Oh, now I go on my hunting trip to Africa. I must get started immediately. I'll get my equipment. Goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Abby. Goodbye, Aunt Martha. I'm on my way to Africa. Isn't it wonderful? Charles! Good morning, darlings. Oh, we have visitors. This is Lieutenant Rooney. Oh, how do you do, Lieutenant? How do you do? My, you don't look like the fuss that the policemen say you are. Oh? Uh, and you uh, haven't met Mr. Witherspoon. He's the superintendent of Happydale. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon. How do you do? How do you do? You've come to meet Teddy. He's come to take him. Uh, aren't his? The police want Teddy to go there today. Oh, no! Not while we're alive. I'm sorry, Miss Brewster, but it has to be done. But we won't permit it. We'll promise to take the bugle away from him. Yes, we won't be separated from Teddy. I'm sorry, ladies, but the law's the law. He's committed himself and he's going. 
Well, if he goes, we are going too. Yes, you'll have to take us with him. Well, why not, Mr. Witherspoon? It's sweet of them to want to, but it's impossible. You see, we can't take sane people at Happydale. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon, if you let us live there with Teddy, we'll see that Happydale is in our will. Yes, and for a very generous amount. Oh, heaven knows we could use the money, but I'm afraid no, it's Now, let's be sensible about this, ladies. I've got serious work to do. You know, there are still murders to be solved in Brooklyn. Yes. <laughs> oh, are there? It's not only his bugle blowing and the neighbours all afraid of him, but things would just get worse. Sooner or later, we'd be put to the trouble of digging up your cellar. Our cellar? Yes. Your nephew's saying that there are 13 bodies buried in your cellar. But there are 13 bodies in our cellar. Oh, no. Well, if you think Teddy invented it, you come down to the cellar with us and we'll prove it to you. Yes, but there's one, a Mr. Spinazzo, who doesn't belong here and who will have to leave. But the other twelve are our gentlemen. Well, I don't think the lieutenant wants to go down into the cellar. I mean, well, he was telling me that only last year he had to dig up half an acre. <laughs> well, weren't you, lieutenant? That's right. Mm. Oh, but you wouldn't have to dig here. The graves are all marked. We put flowers on them every Sunday. Flower? Superintendent, don't you think you can find room for these ladies? Well, they'd uh, have to be committed. Well, 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 Teddy committed himself. I mean, can't they commit themselves? Can't they sign the papers? Why, certainly. No, if we can go with Teddy, we'll sign the papers. Where are they? Yes, where are they? Uh, here they are. He's coming round, Lieutenant. Oh, good morning, Mr. Klein. Are you here, too? Yes, ma'am. Brophy and I have got your oven, nephew, out in the kitchen. Well, sign him up, Superintendent. I want to get this all cleaned up. Thirteen bodies. If you'll sign right here, Miss Brewster. And you on this one, Aunt Abby? Oh, you know, I'm really looking forward to going. The neighbourhood here has changed so. <sighs> Just think, a front lawn again. Ooh. Oh, we're overlooking something. What? Uh, well, we're going to need the signature of a doctor. Oh. Ah! Dr. Einstein, you're just in time. Will you um, come over here? Hmm? We'd, uh, we'd like you to sign some papers. Oh, no, please. I was just on my uh, way. Uh, come to right over, you. Doctor. Oh. <laughs> At oh. one time last night, I thought the Doctor was going to operate on me. Uh. <laughs> hmm. That's right. Just sign here, Doctor. Oh, Good. Yeah. And here. Where are you, suppose? Oh, mm, go ahead. Uh, are you leaving, Doctor? Oh, I think I must. Oh, aren't we going to wait for Jonathan? I don't think we are going to the Ruby. same place. We picked up that guy that's wanted in Indiana. There's a description of his accomplice. Give it to me, will you? Yeah. Uh, 44, 5 foot 6, talks with a German accent, oh. poses as a doctor. Thanks, Mac. It's all right, Lieutenant. The doctor here has just completed the signatures. Thanks, Doc. You're really doing Brooklyn a service. You mean I can go? Sure. Why not? Oh, Thank you. Heaven will reward you for this. Ladies, his own type. Gentlemen, Metaltop. Now, Mr. Brewster, you sign as next of kin. Yes, of course. Uh, right here. That's fine. Uh, and that makes everything complete? Everything legal? Oh, yes. Well, aunties, now you're safe. Uh, when do you think you'll be ready to start, ladies? Mr. Witherspoon. Why don't you go upstairs and tell Teddy just what he can take along with him? Upstairs? Mm, I'll show you. No, no, Mortimer, you stay here. We want to talk to you. Uh, yes, Mr. Witherspoon, just upstairs and turn to the left. Thank you. I shall be long. Well, Mortimer, now that we are moving, this house really is yours. Yes, dear, we want you to live here now. No, Aunt Abby. This house is too full of memories. Oh, but you'll need a house when you and Elaine are married. But darlings, that's very indefinite. It is nothing of the kind. We're going to be married right away. Mortimer. Mortimer, you know, we're really very worried about something. Now, darlings, you're going to love it at Happy Day. Oh, yes, we're very happy about that. Well, that's just it. We don't want anything to go wrong. Will they investigate those signatures? Oh, don't worry. They're not going to look up Dr. Einstein. No, it's not his signature, dear. It's yours. You see, you signed as next of kin. Well, of course. Why not? Well, dear, it's something we never wanted to tell you. But now you're a man. And it's something Elaine should know, too. You see, dear, you're not really a Brewster. What? 
You see, your mother came to us as a cook, and you were born about three months afterwards, and she was such a sweet woman and such a good cook. We didn't want to lose her. So our brother married her. I'm not really a Brewster. Oh, now don't feel badly about it, dear. And Elaine, it won't make any difference to you. Elaine, did you hear? Do you understand? I'm a bastard. Yes, isn't that nice? Oh, darling. Well, now I really must see about breakfast. No, Mortimer's coming over to my house. Father's gone to Philadelphia, and Mortimer and I are going to have breakfast together. Yes, I need some coffee. I've had quite a night. Well, well, come and see you, darlings, at Happy Dale. Goodbye. Mm. <laughs> Dear boy. Oh. oh, I hope they'll be very happy. We won't need the wagon. My car's out front. Oh, are you leaving now, Jonathan? Yes, he's going back to Indiana. There are some people there who want to take care of him for the rest of his life. Now, come on. Well, Jonathan, isn't it nice to know you have some place to go to? We're leaving, too. Yes, we're going to Happy Dale. Then this house is seeing the last of the Brewsters. Unless Mortimer wants to live here. I have a suggestion to make. Why don't you turn this property over to the church? Oh. Oh, we never thought of that. After all, it should be part of the cemetery. All right, get going. I'm a busy man. Goodbye, aunties. I can't better my record now, but neither can you. At least I have that satisfaction. The score stands even. Twelve all. Goodbye. Oh. oh. Jonathan always was a mean boy. Never could stand seeing anyone get ahead of him. I wish we could show him he isn't so smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon, does your family live with you at Happy Dale? I have no family. Oh, I suppose you consider everyone at Happy Dale your family. I'm afraid you don't quite understand. As head of the institution, I have to keep quite aloof. Oh, but that must make it very lonely for you. Oh. It does. But my duty is my duty. Well, Martha. Mm. If Mr. Witherspoon won't join us for breakfast, I think at least we should offer him a glass of elderberry wine. Elderberry wine? We make it ourselves. Why, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> of course, at Happy Dale, our relationship will be more formal, but here... <laughs> you don't see much elderberry wine nowadays. I thought I'd had my last glass of it. Oh, no. No. This is your last glass, Mr. Witherspoon. In Arsenic and Old Lace, BBC Radio Drama's 100th birthday tribute to Athene Siler, you heard her as Martha Brewster. Sybil Thorndyke was Abby Brewster. Prunella Scales was Elaine Harper, Dinsdale Landon was Mortimer Brewster, and Desmond Walter Ellis was Teddy Brewster. Mr. Witherspoon was played by Lockwood West, Dr. Harper, Louis Stringer, Officer Brophy, David Valor, Officer Klein, John Rye, Jonathan Brewster, Heron Carvick, Dr. Einstein, Gerald Cross, Lieutenant Rooney, Edward Kelsey, and Officer O'Hara was Alaric Cotter. That production of Arsenic and Old Lace, first heard in 1971, was directed by Graham Gould. <laughs>